What if your very identity became a weapon used against you, sealing your fate in a crime you never committed? And in a world where everybody is asking, when can we get a conviction? Very few are asking, what if they're wrong? And when they do ask if they're wrong, they're called conspiracy theorists. Well, what if I can prove we're not wrong for asking what if? What if I could prove that DNA, vehicle identification, and security camera footage combined doesn't always prove guilt, and we shouldn't rush to judgment? Well, that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. And if an open conversation is something you prefer, then this is the place for you. Welcome to The Point, so let's talk about it. Now, the story surrounding Anne-Marie Foy's passing is eerily similar to that of the Idaho Four. We have CCTV footage of Anne-Marie right before she was bludgeoned, showing police in the area at or near the time of her passing. Now, with law enforcement's estimation from the time of her passing to her body being discovered is about an 8 hour and 15 minute window. And we also had that video evidence proving that law enforcement was in the King Road area at or near the passing of the Idaho Four, and the time of their attack to when their bodies were discovered was also eight hours. And the nature of both these attacks were particularly brutal. Anne Marie would have over 60 wounds to her head and body, while we're told by Kathy Mavitt that those four individuals passed quickly due to the brutality of their attack. But how does all this tie to Brian Kohlberger, and what makes this evidence similar to his? Well, law enforcement in Ann's case had said that the CCTV footage shows her walking up to a very distinct cab right before they believe she was passed away, which is very similar to what law enforcement is saying over here when they announced that the FBI had correctly identified the suspect's vehicle as being a 2013 white Hyundai Elantra which wasn't the correct year vehicle Brian Kohlberger drove. But I can hear you right now saying that a vehicle's identification and security camera footage alone isn't enough to prove anything. And that isn't what prosecution likes to consider the golden egg. Well, remember in the beginning of the video, I mentioned DNA and what I'm about to prove. And if you like what I'm doing so far, go on and hit that like button down below. Because here's where it gets absolutely interesting. Now under Anne Marie's fingernails, law enforcement would find a partial DNA sample. Just like what was found on the snap of the sheath, and a lot like Brian Kohlberger's situation, when prosecutors found this DNA and got a hit, they believed they had the nail to finally close this case, because that partial DNA would lead them to 65-year-old David Butler, who was also a taxi cab driver, and his cab was very similar to the one found in that camera footage. And he was also known to frequent that area looking to employ women of the night. Which is also a similar story to what law enforcement saying about Brian Kohlberger. Because had they not mentioned that they had several pings of him in the area. And they're saying that he was in that area to stalk or hunt these victims. But now we have everything people believe is needed to prove guilt, right? Video footage, check. The vehicle identification, check. Proof that he was in the area and frequented the area, check. And that magical, infallible DNA that links him to the scene of the crime. Well, this is where you would be wrong. And this is also why I think it's important to question things. Because police often forget the human element of these cases when they're doing their investigations. And more often than not, they tend to put blinders on and aren't able to see the bigger picture. Because what they didn't factor in their overall argument is that David's on oxygen because of COPD. And they're trying to paint this picture that this 65-year-old individual with a documented lung problem has the energy and capability to commit an act so vicious and so vile and so physically taxing when it is clearly obvious that he would never be able to commit anything like this due to his diminished physical nature. Which is also similar to us wondering how Brian Kohlberger was able to navigate that home so quickly given its difficult layout when he reportedly had visual snow. And at this point I can hear everybody getting ready to type into the comments sections what about the DNA. Because we are at the end of the day led to believe that DNA proves somebody was at a particular location. But law enforcement didn't account for the fact that Ann had nail polish on that night. And it has been proven in court that when an individual is wearing nail polish, their ability to gather DNA is significantly increased. 
And remember what we said earlier, they only got a partial sample. And individuals are saying right now, well, that partial sample is still his DNA. So it proves he was there. Well, here's the thing about David. His nickname is Flaky. Due to a skin condition he has that makes him do exactly what you think he would do. So in the scenario where an individual happens to have nail polish on and the potential suspect has a skin condition which causes him to leave more of his skin cells around than anybody else, what sense does it make to have a partial sample? And I'll answer that question for you right now. It makes no sense at all, which is exactly why the jury determined he didn't do this, even though his DNA was found at the scene, even though there was a vehicle very similar to his at the scene even though it was known that he would frequent that area. And the defense would make the case that given the size of that sample, it was more likely that he had exchanged money with another individual. And because touch DNA transfers, as we've talked about in previous videos, that is how his DNA ended up underneath her fingernails. So no, having a vehicle identified and having security camera footage and DNA left at the scene of a crime is not the end all be all. That doesn't exclude anybody from having the right to raise a question. It isn't that any of us want a guilty man to get away with the crime. We just want to make sure that we know the person the police are saying did it actually did it. And if you want to hear my thoughts on the roommates, go on and click on the playlist. Other than that, y'all be safe now.